Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my playlist where we are talking about NestJS Advance. And in this video, we are here. We are going to talk about NestJS with the Prisma. In the last video, we talked about how we can just uh, understand how we are doing a Prisma migrations, Prisma generate, and how we can use Prisma models to access the database entities. Okay. And these all these things topic we already covered how to have a JSON B column and how to define the transactions, how to have an offset and key set key key set based uh, pagination. Now it's very much simplified using typo rm 3x or you can also check out my code how we were doing it with the typo rm 2x using uh, query runner. Okay, now we are doing this thing. So we are not going to build a lots of big things what we will do here is uh, i'm trying to create a simple api platform so this is let's say different entities i have we can just talk about a simple authentications and a blog and post so these are the three different entities mm -hmm. and all those things will be using prisma so let's say this is user entity okay let me just uh, increase the size this is a user this is blog and this is comments or whatever you add. Okay, so all these will be defined inside a Prisma schema. Right? And we are going to use a Postgres as a database. So all these things will be inside a Prisma schema. Or what we can do is because NestJS is modular. So how we do it, we create a domain folder inside a source. And inside domain, we can have a user auth blog, user auth blog, and then comments. And we can also have, like, let's say Prisma. And inside this, I will just have a base Prisma config. I will have a base Prisma config, which will uh, which will just inform you about the provider and your client library like provider is a SQLite, Postgres or MySQL okay and then what you can do is you can have individual schema files inside these folders you can have a separate user dot schema you can have auth is not an entity here you can have a blog dot schema and manually you can merge them together here it is a comment dot schema. So there are many ways of doing it. Either you have everything inside, all the models defined inside one Prisma schema. So mostly in last video, what we were doing is inside a root folder, we were having this Prisma folder. Inside that we were having Prisma dot schema file, right? That contains your providers and all the models. But you can also just like isolate and can have their own schema files and then you have to merge it together right this prisma folder will have the prisma schema files prisma module prisma service to initialize the uh, the database connection so it will have a prisma service prisma module all the basic stuff we can have inside this folder prisma folder and comments will have its own comment schema And then we will merge all these together inside source domain then rest all the things you have a database logger config and all but this is how we are going to do we are going to write authentication apis which is going to return you the token and then we can write some middleware and some gwt based uh, token strategy like local strategy and uh, authentication strategy local strategy will take username password we will access a user service and all those things like all the controllers and service whatever you are going to write they all going to use services right they all going to use this particular service they are going to use a prisma client at the end right prisma client will help you to access these particular database tables user blog comments and all so you just inject the prisma uh, client and then this dot prisma client dot model this dot prisma client dot user this dot prisma client dot blog this dot prisma client dot comment this is how you will access them and this is going to interact with your database and we already know how to do the migrations 
using Prisma. We define the schema files and we can run the migration. So I'm not going to just talk about the APIs because I think you're already aware how to build the API platform. Here my focus more is on the, the Prisma side, how we are doing, a, how we can split the Prisma schema, how we combine them and how we are inter interfacing with uh, the Prisma client library to access the data. Rest all authentication I have done many times, building the authentication service using NestJS, Taiko, RM, NestJS, MongoDB and all. Okay, let's get started on that. So what we are going to do, we are going to play with this example. Okay, I mean, this is the, the code which I have, uh, have already written. I mean, I can just walk you through some code snippet, but I have already built authentication service many times and it's really boring. So I don't, I'm not going to do it again. My focus more is on understanding the Prisma. So you can see here, I don't have a Prisma at the root. I try to split the Prisma schema from the base schema to the further, right? So here I just have a base schema in the Prisma folder, which is inside source. And then I do have a Prisma schema like category schema dot schema. And then I do have inside post dot schema. I have it. Okay. It should be inside a users, user schema, address schema. And then I'm trying to combine all these schema together and how I'm doing it. You can do it with some script like uh, here. I'm doing it with this npm run uh, generate schema. If you want to just combine all of these together, this is the optional step. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I won't recommend you to do it. So generate schema. Okay. Prisma is not a folder. So what we can do is create a Prisma folder. And then I think we can also create a schema dot Prisma file. And I will run this script again. So you can see schema dot Prisma has been generated. I can just a little bit correct this thing. So on the fly, you can just do it. It's just like concating the files, nothing much important. Otherwise, you can have a single config file also, single schema file also that will help you. So database URL, I may I don't have any migrations, so I will just try to first of all, I can do pnpm install. Let's see if we already have the Prisma client already there. And then npx prisma generate. Okay, uh, there is some error. And how we can know that? Because there is a model user and do, do we have post model defined somewhere? Oh, that's missing. So this is an error, right? So model post is not has has not been declared anywhere. So what I will do is model post. And I will just try to have an ID auto incremented ID and then name string basic things now the source db cannot be defined because okay that's fine we have data source now if i try to do generate still there is a problem okay error validating so this is a prisma schema file so it is validating the format and we actually concreted the file and generated this so it is validating it. So we can just check our Prisma schema file earlier, which we have. So this is the data source and then generator client. Data source DB and generator client. Data source DB and uh, generator client. That is correct. Model is there. Category address user. What is the problem? Error validating the fields post in model category. Yes, I think that's uh, wrong because we have we are just defining the relationship, but not primary key, foreign key. Address is belongs to the user. User has address ID and post. For post also, we need to associate a relationship. So I will just try to generate. Now this will work because now, but we are missing some relationships here. User, right? So what user is doing is you need to have a user ID in the post collection, right? So user can have the post. So what I will do is this is I need to have two things here. So user has an address. So this is a user relationship with the with the post. So this is how we just write our schema, right? Here I will just play with this. So there is a user I need. 
and that is going to have a relationship with the user relationship field is a user id that is defined here user id and all these are auto incremented not a uuid okay it is referencing with this i can i validate this again and this is validated right i have a user id in the post collection similarly category we don't need to define the relationships here address address as a user right because this address belongs to which user okay now it looks perfectly fine we can also run the migration command npx prisma migrate dev migrate dev so what it will do is it will just wipe out the database and i will just say base migration and it has generated this migration form which contains all the sequels right post category address user and then it is adding the foreign key user id and address id in the respective tables this is what i want so either you have uh, this base schema file split it and this is how we have a basic schema generated right basic tables generated from the prisma schema and we are running the migrations and all now looking at the prisma client how we are interfacing with the prisma client so what we are doing here is we have a prisma folder and i have created a prisma module separately what the prisma module is doing nothing it just have a simple prisma service in the providers prisma service is just uh, initializing the connections and i'm just using these two interfaces i mean two implementing these interfaces on module init and on module that's why because once you initialize the module you need to connect once you release you need to release the resources so disconnect to the database connections okay so here this is how now I, I will just talk about simple authentication so this is my authentication controller right so what i'm doing inside authentication i do have a login register and all so inside a login we are using this authentication guard and you already know how we are doing with the how do you how we deal with authentication in nest js we use this passport local strategy and then once you logged in we attach this authentication guard so when you log out that means you must be logged in first if you want to get your profile you must be logged in first so we are just creating a local strategy and authentication guard so local authentication guard what it is doing is it is executing it is first of all getting your so here is our local authentication guard which is getting the email field and the password field so this is like your local passport strategy and we and we are registering this passport module here you can see jwt module dot register sync and from the config module we are passing jwt secrets and jwt expiration time i mean this is an asynchronous initialization of a dynamic module right we are passing this configuration at the runtime not a just hard coded configuration coming from process dot env now local strategy it is just checking okay email is there password is there and then it will validate so i think before that we should talk about register uh, sign up that's simple we are just doing authentication service dot register and what the registry is doing it simple is creating a bcrypt hash of the password and then it is just uh, what it is doing is user service dot create we already have a user service you just pass your email and the hash password and this create method is doing it prisma service so prisma service is giving us the prisma client dot user is the model prisma service is nothing but a prisma client dot user dot create you pass your data and include the address also okay and it will just give you the response with the user and the address field so here you can see what i'm doing is i'm creating a user with the address okay so here i'm just creating the user with the address and once i am trying to fetch because once the creation is done i will get the response with the address object so it's like a, you don't need to define your relations but you need to fetch so that's the beauty of the prisma so this is how we are creating it so what i will do is i will run this example and let's play with this uh, code so i got some errors and that is because in the post we are using different fields so i just changed it title content and this is should be author and i can check this particular service what we are doing we have this author field include the category so post also has a category relationship so this is our post that has a category relationship 
videos. So we need to add post also have a category ID. Okay, so we can just reference it. So like user has the post. We can define the relationship for this also. So we need to have a category ID. So it is going to be referred with category table. And then we also need to have a category ID as a auto incremented ID. So I added a category ID and this will again be a integer field so post has the category id author and i think that should fix my problems we do have a title so we need to generate the title include category okay so i will go to my schema file again so i do have a category id reference with the category and i mean why i'm just putting an array because this category can be assigned to the multiple posts like a single user can write a multiple post. Uh, so let's do the changes again. So I'm doing generate command and it is throwing some error because I need to do some formatting. So here we are able to fix it. I mean, there was some random import added on the top. Now I can just do Prisma generate. So if you try to see this Prisma schema file, because this is the reflection of your APIs and the tables. We have category, we have the post. Post has the relationship with the category and author. Because who's going to write the post? Author. And we, uh, post will belongs to a particular category. So we are associating a post with a category. And a single category can be assigned to a multiple posts. So this is like a one to many relationship we have. Single user can write a multiple post. So this is a one to many, right? And a single category can be assigned to the multiple posts, one to many. Okay, and then here it is many to one. So from post to the user and from post to the category. Okay, we generated the Prisma client. Now I will start the application again. So here I can see my application is started. Uh, there are some dependencies. And if you specify this in the dot env, right? because we are using this config module. Let's see if I remove these dependencies, remove these uh, declarations from .env. We are using this config module, which will check the validation schema that you are, are you passing secret and the expiration time or not. If not, then it will break your start process. So what you need to make sure is in the .env you have both these properties and then we can just trigger this again and all these properties now application is started we can start playing with this so for now just take a look on to what we are doing so we have authentication module i think we i have initialized all the authentication apis right what it is doing is authentication module and it is using uh, user module passport module config module and jwt module to register the jwt process Passport module for having a local strategy and user module because in user module we are accessing the user service from the authentication service that is all about okay validating the user creating the user and checking if user exists in the database by get by email and then there is authentication service which is just checking okay first creating the hash password and then calling user service to create a user and then here we can see it is comparing the password first of all it is checking that user exists by this email from the user service and then uh, we are comparing the password if password match doesn't found we will just throw an error wrong credential password passed and bad request that will end our api response if everything is fine return the user request and this is what being called from the authentication controller so register is clear right we are just doing a simple registration and here it is a login once you got the the login what login is doing login is creating log uh, login is using this use guard which is happening here it is whatever it is returning from this is being added to the request.user object this is that's why we use passport that whatever the passport resolve it add those some things to the request.user and it is just calling this get authenticated user, which is just checking email and the password with the bcrypt compare. If everything is good, 
it will return the user object that will get added to the request.user. So here this request.user means this guard has done its job. User is valid with this email password. We got the user object. Now you can just generate a cookie, set the cookies in the response header and then send the response, send the user back. User got the, and the client got the cookies and now the same cookies can be sent back to the server while doing a login or while doing a authenticate APIs. Once you are logged in, you can use the guard to check that are you passing me the right credentials. So that is happening on this JWT strategy. And here, if you remember, there are different ways. What we are doing is we are returning the cookies. So like, let's say here it is your APIs and this is your client. To the client, you are returning the cookies, right? So token is inside a cookie. So when you are coming back, the same cookies will be applied and we will be extracting it from the request.headers. The same thing we are doing here. Here we are extracting. So these are like multiple extractors to extract the token. You can extract it from the headers. And these are the cookies. We are extracting the cookies from the authentication property inside cookies. Request.cookies.authentication because this is the property where we have set the cookies. So it will extract the cookies and it will validate the cookies and then whatever the pay payload we are getting because all the validation are happening here. It will give you the decode payload that uh, token is valid which we have received from the cookies and I will validate then I will just check okay get my user id that whatever the, the user id is there in the token payload does it really exist yes then it will put this user in the request.user and the same thing we are accessing here request.user and then we are returning the user so I'm logged in I wanted to hit this API it will just return you your own user profile so this is how yeah, this all really works and we have done this authentication the local strategy JWT strategy local strategy we are using just for a simple uh, login like we are passing email password JWT strategy we are using to validate the token coming from the cookies and then decoding it and putting uh, the final user object on the request okay so let's see this in the implementation Okay, so now what we will do is we will test this application. Before that, I did a small change and what the change is inside user, I made the address optional because otherwise while creating a user, you need to provide the address ID, which I really don't have. So what I will do is npm run start dev. So it should start my application on port 3000. You can also check the port because I hard coded it here. This should be ideally process.env.port. Either use this port or use 3000 port. In that case, it will be running the application on I think 3010 because the port it is taking from .env. Okay. So here we will just try to reload the page. Okay, this is my simple authentication service, right? Register, login, and log out. Just now we can just play around with these APIs. What I can do is simply we can use uh, this particular tool, Insomnia, or you can just use any REST client which you want. So here, what do I have is simple, I can just do simple register, right? And I think this user already exists. Okay, the port I need to change. It's uh, 3010 now because I'm accessing it from the ENV. So I will just say hello to, and it has created this user. And now I can just do simple login, which is here. This is my API endpoint. I will change the port and I will pass this. So you can see here inside this header, we are getting the cookies. So now if I try to access my own profile, I should be able to fetch my own data. So now here I am able to do the login, simple login, and we are getting these cookies. And here you can do manage cookies and the same cookies will be sent back whenever you are doing, hitting this particular route. Okay, we don't need a body here. I can send it and it is giving you 200 status code. The only thing which you need to make sure is the expiry of this token should be enough. Like 
I put these thousands milliseconds, so it is around like uh, more than 24 hours. And whatever the secrets you are putting, these two parameters are important. And how we are populating these environment variables in the process.env, we are using config module. So config module here is a config module dot for root. Right, what this is doing is this is just a validation schema that when you are initializing the application, both needs to be there in your dot env. So by default, whenever you write config module dot for root, whatever you have inside your dot env file, it will put all those things inside a process dot env. Right, this is what we want. Whatever I've defined here, I just need a process dot env dot database URL process dot env dot do. Uh, dot port all those configurations will be populated because we are using config module i mean you can write your own config module on database module and all but this is coming from the next yes so this is just a simple example how we are dealing with the prisma now in this module 2 where i'm talking about uh, different orms we will talk about other orms and the integration with the next yes and once we are done we will deep dive into the module 3 which is more about testing writing the unit tests, mocking the dependencies, mocking the services and all. That's really nice concept. And then we will talk about Next.js integrations with external services. And also the interesting topic which I have just added, Next.js with WebSockets and Next.js or the serverless application like how you deploy, how you build the whole microservice which is being deployed as a Lambda on the AWS serverless. So those things I'm going to add in this playlist.